Adapting to sudden and unexpected changes is a core tenet of human survival. However, abruptly finding yourself trapped in an apparently infinite extra-dimensional pocket dimension in the form of a never-ending IKEA, well, that can take a brief adjustment period to get used to. Callan hadn't even noticed for the first few moments wandering through the aisles, aimlessly passing aisles of hemnes and trisils, all the assembled display pieces of affordable flatback furniture. It would have been more exciting, shopping for all the accoutrements for his brand new apartment, if Callan wasn't being perpetually reminded that he was moving in there on his own. It took him almost 20 minutes of walking through the row of IKEA products for him to realize something felt off. He had hardly seen anybody else around. In fact, the more he thought about it, there hadn't even been any employees in their garish yellow polo shirts and blue pants at the front of the store. Squinting off in the distance, Callan couldn't even see the far wall of the store. Sure, he knew IKEA outlets were big inside, somewhere between a supermarket and an industrial warehouse, but this place seemed to go on forever. Figuring that he had unknowingly stumbled out of the store proper and into a large storage area, Callan turned around and started to try to retrace his steps back to the entrance. It was after another 20 minutes of taking this approach that things went from feeling off to being overtly unsettling. By the time that over an hour had passed, Callan was starting to panic, racing through the seemingly unending store, the rubber soles of his sneakers squeaking against the epoxy resin floor as he yelled loudly for somebody, anybody, that might hear him. Before long, the latest victim to find themselves lost inside SCP-3008 was hitting the first existential hurdle that came with being trapped in the infinite IKEA. Callan sat on a display couch, a two-seated Soderham with a Shea lounge, in case anyone was wondering. He was curled up into a ball, knees tucked under his chin, as he gently started rocking himself back and forth in a futile attempt to comfort himself. It hadn't yet quite sunk in just how trapped he was. The thought that he might starve to death amongst the endless stock of Sores and Fjartigs. The store is now closed. Please exit the building. The sudden sound of a voice startled Callan, snapping him out of his dread-filled daydream enough to realize the store now seemed darker. The lights had been gradually dimming the longer he had stayed, creating an artificial night within SCP-3008. Normally the sign of another person after being isolated would come as a relief, but whoever had spoken was nowhere to be seen. A slow shuffling moved around the sofa Callan was sitting on until he finally called out into the dark. Hello? Is anyone there? There was a pause. The movement stopped for an agonizingly quiet moment. The store is now closed. Please exit the building. The voice repeated as the unseen speaker stepped out of the shadows. Even in the low light, the creature was horrifying. Everything about it was just wrong. For a split second, Callan thought it might be an IKEA employee who was wearing the uniform after all, but the bodily proportions were all off, arms hanging nearly all the way down to the floor, hands and fingers enlarged and elongated. As for its face, it didn't have one. The ordinary features were all missing, and now it was running right for him. Callan leaped over the back of the Soderheim and ran. His first instinct was to get away and hide. Checking over his shoulder, he caught sight of the faceless creature dashing right past the couch with enough force to knock it over. In his startled state, looking out of the corner of his eye at the encroaching staff member, Callan tripped over his feet and tumbled back down to the hard floor. The creature loomed over him as he tried to crawl towards a nearby aisle. Looking up at it, the staff member was reaching for him, its big, disproportionate hand outstretched trying to grab at Callan as he lay there helplessly. Suddenly, something struck the faceless creature. Someone barely visible in the dim lights of the store had leaped down from the shelves of the aisle and swung a makeshift weapon at the staff member. As it connected, the creature reeled, stumbling over itself, long enough for the mystery assailant to take another swipe at it. Their weapon, comprised of what looked like part of a curtain rail with a pair of kitchen knives at one end, impaled the staff member, ripping through its bright yellow Ikea polo and out on the other side. Striding over to where Callan was still laying on the floor, awestruck by the display he just witnessed, the figure pulled back the hood of a rudimentary cloak they were wearing, fashioned by hand out of an Aina curtain fabric. Revealing herself with a stern, serious look on her face, the woman reached a hand out to Callan, offering to help him up, rather than whatever that faceless creature had wanted with him. 
It's okay, I'm not gonna hurt you, she stated as she pulled him back to his feet. This is probably all pretty confusing for you, right? Still too stunned to speak, Callan just nodded. Yeah, it was for me too, the woman replied. We don't have long until more staff show up, so you need to come with me and don't ask questions, okay? Seeing him nod again, she took Callan's head and led him through the dark recesses of the infinite Ikea. Stealthily, the pair of them snuck through the aisles, keeping low and ducking down out of sight whenever more of the staff lumbered into their path until they had wandered elsewhere, clearing the way for them to proceed. Kellen's new guide seemed to instinctively know her way around the layout of the sprawling maze of flat-packed Swedish furniture, quietly urging him to stay close, offering him a hand up when they climbed up shelving units, until finally they arrived at their destination. A warm glow emanated from somewhere beyond a tall, makeshift barrier. Sofas and cabinets were stacked on top of each other, forming an intricate wall around an area of SCP-3008. And right in the middle of this rudimentary barricade was a large two-door Pax Fardel wardrobe, its back missing, doors inwards, facing towards the inner side of the blockade. The guide stepped into the incomplete wardrobe and gave a specifically timed knock three beats, with the third following the first two after a short pause. From the other side, it sounded like something was being hurriedly removed from the wardrobe's handles before the doors opened up to allow her and Callan entry. Beyond the outer wall, this part of the infinite Ikea looked to have been converted into a small town, with a sign hanging above that read, Decoration, Population 58. There were even more people within, most in handmade clothing crafted out of scraps of fabric, along with the remnants of old clothes from the outside world they'd been cut off from. Some looked like they were standing on guard, carrying weapons similar to the guide's weapon. Others were sitting around together, talking casually under the light of the Solifetta floor lamps. Okay, the guide sighed, turning back to Callan. We're safe now that we're inside the wall, so you can talk again now. Ah, uh, thank you, he replied awkwardly. For saving me, I mean. Don't mention it. She smiled for the first time since they had met. I'm sure you've got a lot of questions, so ask away. I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. Where am... Callan's voice trailed off, thinking of a question he wanted to know the answer to even more than where he was or what was up with this place. Who are you? The girl smiled and offered him an outstretched hand. My name's Kia. Over the coming months and with a lot of direction from his new friend, Callan slowly started to adjusting to living inside SCP-3008. The lifestyle was completely different from what he was used to before. Instead of renting or buying a house or apartment, the survivors had established their own little settlements, using the copious amounts of IKEA furniture around to construct homes for themselves. Without access to money or any need for it, nobody was self-serving either. Everyone chipped in and helped each other out agreed to take on tasks that would benefit their fellow survivors. There was a strong sense of community inside. All anyone had in the infinite Ikea was each other. They were all in the same situation, and surviving it was made easier by cooperating. Kia took responsibility for showing Callan around, teaching him all about life inside SCP-3008. When he asked her why she was so adamant about keeping an eye on him, she replied by telling him that when she arrived, she'd been scared and alone. Even when the town of decoration had taken her in, Kia still needed to learn all the basics on her own. She admitted that she wished somebody was there to teach her, and endeavored to do exactly that for Callan. She started by telling him what the best time to head to the food court was. Every day, all the food in SCP-3008 would somehow reappear, meaning that everyone could easily have their fill and survive without having to hunt or kill each other in order to eat. Kia's next lesson involved teaching Callum how to use IKEA stationery to leave subtle but recognizable symbols around the store, so that if he was ever lost, he could find his way back to decoration safely while avoiding the staff. That's the thing about living here, she said. When we first arrived, we all think we've got nothing, but this place has food, shelter, tools, everything we need. We just have to learn to use what it gives us. As time went on, Callan found himself paired up with Kia for patrols. During the daytime, staff would wander aimlessly around the store, far more docile than they were at night. To make sure that they were ready in the event of an attack by the faceless creatures, the survivors mapped out the staff's movements, reporting back to their settlements in case a large group of them were wandering too close. The more they went out together, the more Callan found himself eagerly looking forward to being in Kia's company. 
Maybe it was just because she was the first person he'd met inside the infinite Ikea. Perhaps because she had saved his life. But there was something about her that made him feel a little less sad about being trapped here. A feeling that would soon be cruelly ripped away. It happened during an otherwise normal patrol. Kia and Callan were checking the aisles, keeping an eye on the staff, and tallying every one they saw. The lights were starting to dim, indicating that it would soon be night again, and the pair of them agreed it was time to start heading back to decoration. That was, until a sudden screeching caught their attention. What the hell was that? Callan whispered. No idea, Kia replied. Could be someone else just arrived. She gave a hand signal that instructed Callan to split up. The pair of them moved through parallel aisles towards the source of the noise. It sounded like stone scraping against the floor, the weight of concrete causing whatever was being moved to generate a grating, eardrum-piercing racket. As he moved silently through the now familiar space of SCP-3008, Kellen racked his brain about what could be making a noise like that. There was nothing that heavy or made of stone within Ikea, at least not that he had encountered. Even Kia had looked surprised when first detecting that sound. She'd been in here for so much longer, so it was telling when even she had no clue what had made it. Suddenly, the noise stopped quickly as it had started, followed by the call of a familiar voice. Callan, come look at this, Kia called. What is it? He shouted back, trying to keep his voice low but audible, aware that staff might be nearby. I don't know, some kind of statue. I've never seen anything like this in here before. Kia was cut off mid-sentence, a quick, loud scrape of concrete against the resin floor, followed by a blood-curdling scream. Eyes widening in horror, worried for her safety, Callan sprinted further down the aisle, frantically calling Kia's name. As he reached the nearest corner, the scream stopped. Her cries didn't fade, lowering gradually, then petering off. Instead, her voice just cut out abruptly with a sickening, muffled crack, like the sound of bone breaking beneath the skin. Panting, Callan whipped around the corner. That's when he saw her lying on the floor, totally unnervingly still. Her head was tilted at an unnatural angle, the bones of her neck misaligned as blood dripped from her nose. Kia's body was lying at the feet of something Callan had never seen since he arrived at the infinite Ikea. It was some kind of sculpture, constructed out of concrete over a metal rebar skeleton, with a crude attempt at spray paint over its outer surface. He had no idea that this statue was often referred to as SCP-173, otherwise known simply as the Sculpture. But then Callan was more focused on how distraught he felt at seeing Kia dead on the floor. He had never worked up enough courage to tell her, always worried that it would make things weird between them. And now he'd never get the chance again, would never get to see her smile as he took on the lessons that she taught him about surviving in SCP-3008. Feeling his eyes well up, Callan blinked away, tears. Suddenly, the sculpture shot forward, in the split second that his eyes were closed. Callan staggered away in shock and stumbled over, landing on his back on the floor. As he went to get up, SCP-3008 was inches away from him, having moved yet again of its own accord. Carefully, Callan stood up, making sure to keep looking straight at the sinister statue. It was getting clear what this thing was doing, that it couldn't move while being observed. Sure enough, as he started to cautiously back away one step at a time, SCP-173 stayed still, frozen in place. Reaching the corner, his eyes stinging, desperate to blink, Callan took a deep breath, fixing his gaze on the sculpture for one moment longer until, turning and sprinting as fast as his legs would allow, Callan had a few short moments to blink, sending his tears streaming down his face. Behind him, he could hear the same oncoming sound of concrete scraping heavily against the floor as the sculpture gave chase. Callan rushed down the aisles, grabbing stacks of flat packs off the store shelves and pulling them onto the floor, leaving piles upon piles of mess behind him in a desperate attempt to slow the oncoming statue down. Why hadn't it killed him already? Perhaps it was just playing with its food. He thought about trying to get back to decoration, wondering if maybe any of the other surviving settlers had encountered SCP-173 before. But as he ran, Callan caught sight of some of the symbols he and Kia had left around the store to help them find their way around. One of them denoted that there were hiding spots nearby, and spurred him on to change course in that direction. He couldn't lead the sculpture back to town, not if it could slaughter them all in the blink of an eye. Finding a cramped cupboard, 
Callan climbed inside and shut the door behind him. With his knees tucked under his chin, he couldn't help but remember the time he had arrived in the infinite Ikea. He had done almost the exact same thing when he first encountered a staff member. He'd run, and his first instinct had been just to run away and hide. That was something about Kia he had always wished he could be. She was fearless, easily standing up to that staff creature that would have killed Callan if she hadn't intervened. Trapped inside a cupboard, the deafening noise of scraping concrete outside as the sculpture searched for him, Callan felt like he'd let her down. It seemed that despite Kia's best efforts to teach him, he was still scared. As he sat in the dark praying the sculpture wouldn't find him, he apologized under his breath to her. Callan started replaying every moment he and Kia had spent together, partly to keep her alive in his memory, but also so that he could at least think of something good before SCP-173 found him and broke his neck the same way. Every lesson about life in SCP-3008, every one of Kia's skills she had painstakingly passed on were still all there including the best piece of advice she'd ever given. We have to learn to use what this place gives us. Her words echoed in his head as Callan finally realized that she hadn't just been talking about taking food from the food court or using flat packs to build shelters and settlements. She'd shown him how to navigate, how to evade the staff, and that everything in the infinite Ikea could have some usefulness in aiding survival. As much as it hurt knowing Kia was gone, Callan realized that she might have already saved him a second time. He peeked out of the cupboard door. The bathroom section was just a quick dash away, and SCP-173 was nowhere to be seen. A few moments later, the sculpture detected a loud sound, someone knocking things together. Shouting and whooping had caught its attention. Unobserved, the concrete creature zapped its way towards the source of the commotion moving quickly over towards the bathroom department of the store's endless aisles. It came to a sudden, instinctive stop, sensing eyes were watching it. Its entire stone body froze, rigidly fixed to the spot it was standing on. It didn't matter that the eyes watching it this time were its own. Reflected back at itself in an assortment of mirrors, SCP-173 was stuck. Someone had sprung a trap for the statue, making it so that from the moment it shot over to its current position, it wouldn't be able to move. It was constantly being observed by itself, no matter what angle its reflection would be within its own direct line of sight. Standing atop a nearby stack of shelves, Calvin looked down at the concrete statue, trapped in a collection of mirrors that he had assorted into a ring. Hey you! He called down at it, hoping it could hear him, even though it was frozen in place. The store is now closed. Please exit the building. He struck loudly against the metal frame of the shelves, hoping it was loud enough to be heard. Sure enough, the staff quickly descended on the source of the noise. The night made the staff feral, hostile towards anything they sensed to be an outside presence. They instantly honed in on SCP-173, attacking it to little avail thanks to its stone body. Eventually, the group of staff grew in number, starting to heave the sculpture as they went to remove it from the premises. Climbing from shelf to shelf, Callan followed them the entire way. The staff had no eyes, so technically couldn't look at SCP-173, but he could. Even through tears, he didn't blink until the sculpture had been removed. He wanted to make sure it was what Kia would have done. Now go and check out Real IKEA Manager Goes Mad With Power in SCP-3008 and SCP-096 vs. SCP-173 for more videos featuring the anomalies featured in today's tale.